What's going on guys? It is Sparky from Sparking and Zeg Attack. Um today is going to be a review on the top five best Spider-Man games of all time. There have been so many Spider-Man games over the years. But which ones are the best? And which ones are the worst? Well, I really don't care which ones you think are the worst, because this one is about the best ones. From five to one. Which ones are the best Spider-Man games of all time? Which games mainly capture the ability to become Spider-Man and to swing in New York City? It's a good question, isn't it? This game review was just on my opinions, which are the best ones. So you can have your own ones. You can even make your own Spider-Man game review. I don't care. But just know that my opinion is the best one, because I said so. And, and because I worked hard on this review. Which ones have the best graphics? Which one has the best play style? Which one has the best web swinging? Which one has the best costume? I guess that one doesn't make any sense. No Spider-Man 3 gets that button push crap. Number 5, Ultimate Spider-Man. So Ultimate Spider-Man was the game based on the comic books in the 2000s. I rated this one number 5 for a couple reasons. The first one is because of the playstyle. It's got a pretty good one and it really matches to the game Spider-Man 2. I really didn't notice too much difference. It really captures Peter Parker's high school career, because that's where it's mainly set. And you get to fight a big huge black guy named Venom, and you get to fight a guy with like electrical shock thingies in your, in your suit. And I really like the, the bad guy fighting thing. But what I mainly like about the game is that you can be Peter Parker with his powers. The one thing that none of the Spider-Man games captured except for this one is that Peter Parker had his powers outside of being Spider-Man. In this game you can actually use his powers as Peter Parker and you can be Peter Parker whenever you freaking want to. Which is real number four, The Amazing Spider-Man. So this game was okay. It was based on the 2012 movie The Amazing Spider-Man. It came up with something new, and it was a plot after the movie, so it was like a sequel. Kinda like the game Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters, which was a really good game on its own. But anyways, this game was okay. The big problem with it was, was the web swinging. It never, it never really showed you where you were web swinging. Like, like you hit the air, which was really, really stupid. Um, also, like, the people were not in the city. Like, there were, but there were, like, no people anywhere. Um, the, the clouds were cool. Um, and you could wall run, finally, at, without running out of stamina. That was cool. And you could walk on cars and stuff. Um, but the main problem with it was also the plot because you had the lizard and the lizard was already used and that was bull crap number three spider-man friend or foe this game was amazingly awesome the thing that no other spider-man games had was a two-player spider-man game that you could play with all your hey, friends man. you're a walking pile you could even be the new goblin fun of you would be which was easy. always cool Spy why wouldn't you want to be the new goblin he's a good guy That voice, yeah, he played that guy from Star Wars and that guy from, from the Ninja Turtle movie. But anyway, the really cool thing about this game was that it was two player. You could finally have somebody play with you. And the bad guys were these robot phantom-like things, which I guess was okay as an enemy, but at least you had something to fight. I mean, you know, why not criminals? Be because they're robots and Venom was cool. Oh, and by the way, at the end of each level, the really cool thing was that you got to fight a classic enemy. That was cool. Gross. Number 2, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. This game worked out really well for its type. With this, for web swinging, finally it seemed really realistic. You had to attach to a building to web swing. And L2 and R2 for the PlayStation 3, for the controls for web swinging, L2 was left hand and R2 was right hand. That was unique. Um, you could finally be Peter Parker. 
That was cool. My first Amazing Spider-Man was in first person as Peter Parker. This isn't Call of Duty. He could even have his room. And there were so many costumes to choose from. Personally, I like the first Amazing Spider-Man costume, but that's just me. And I'm right, remember? Anyways, so the cool bad guy fighting thing was also really cool. It was really realistic, and it felt good to kick some guys in the face. Spider-Man 2 is number one, which you probably expected. Everybody loves Spider-Man 2, especially for the PS2. Who doesn't love Spider-Man 2 for the PS2? Why is it so good, you may ask? Well, there's a big reason. The voice acting by Tobey Maguire was great. This whole Central Park thing was cool. The whole fighting bad guy thing was cool. It was almost like a little Grand Theft Auto free roam thing. So you see in the first Spider-Man game in 2002, it couldn't even touch the freaking ground, which was stupid. But in this game, it was the first Spider-Man game that you could. It was also the first Spider-Man game where the web sway you had to attach onto a building. That stuff was really impressive. I mean, think about it. In 2004, you know, there, was a, there wasn't much really expected in a video game. There is now. But back then, games like this were amazing. Especially now, you can even find a pool table bar. Anyway, that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it.